What is one way validation can heal broken trust? We'll cover that in this episode. But as a side note, the last video covered the concept of a child being afraid of a monster under his bed. So this video will expand upon that a bit. We'll see you there. In the monster under the bed scenario, agreement doesn't solve the problem either. Yeah, right. What, what I, if you freaked out? Just, yeah, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> but you have a kid, you run out of the room, that. <laughs> set the house on fire, hoping to kill the monster. Wow, that's very funny. And so, you know, <laughs> even then, agreement doesn't it doesn't solve the problem to agree in that situation. And, and so even in, even in relationships, my brain doesn't work right. I mean, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I'll just go there. Um, but if every time your spouse brought you something and you just agreed and just went all in with everything they said, that may not be validating either that may make this situation worse. Because what you're saying then is, I don't know how to deal with it in a way that supports you. It could potentially make things worse, especially in the scenario with your son. If you agree with him, yes, there is a monster in the bed and you grab him, you jerk him out of bed and you run, you know, you run out of the house, he's now more scared than he was you know, when you walked into the room and kind of made everything okay by saying, wow, man, what's going on? Tell me, you know, tell me more. And maybe in, in the nuance of adult relationship, you not necessarily making it worse and agreeing with everything. Cause there's quite a few things, Lori, <laughs> it would have just been so much easier for me to go. You're absolutely right. And just, <laughs> you know, go with agreement <laughs> recognize that some of my behavioral patterns do need to change and agreement is one way to do that but in some in some of these things agreement can take us in a direction number one that isn't if i can't be honest about it i'm really not helping the relationship because ultimately what's going to happen for me is i'm not living in integrity which was a problem anyway yeah and if I'm not living in my integrity, eventually that's going to come through too. That I truly don't believe at my core what it is that you're upset about. And, and that's where that whole agreement idea breaks down is it, it, it doesn't necessarily work. But validation can always work because what I'm agreeing to is... For you, your pain is real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, I'm not, and I care about it. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I think that's such an important it. element of the math of this. You can trust me to value, like whether you're hurt or not, and to participate effectively in helping the hurt go away, rather than doing things that exacerbate it. Even if I'm claiming like innocence, or you know what I mean, like we get so defensive because we don't try to hurt people. Instead of considering that the math results of what we're doing hurts, regardless of our intentions sometimes. And then we get stuck in this like, you know, agreement conflict pattern. I, and I'd, I'd like to just like follow up one more thing with that, because I think it's such an important idea for people to consider in their home lives if their patterns look like yours and mine. Um, it, what my wife learned after 12 ish years with me, no, nine years married was the following. She had, you know, a dozen years of data. And, it's, and, it, and, it, and it, the, on the other side, the equal sign was the following conclusion. When I come to Matt and I tell him that something's wrong, he's great when he agrees with me, when he understands it, when it makes sense to him. But 100% of the time that he doesn't agree, that it somehow doesn't make sense to him, Matt implies that I'm wrong, that I'm weak or crazy, that even if I'm hurt, he's justified and correct in doing things the way that he does. And so 100% of the time, over 12 years, if Matt doesn't agree that I should think or feel the things that I think and feel, he chooses himself over me. And that is 100% accurate in the context of my marriage. And I would have told her she was full of it if she'd said something like that to me, to be fair, 
when we were married, but it's so true. And I, I just think it's so important for people to consider what that says and what that means and how a healthy person with, with strong personal values and healthy personal boundaries will choose to leave a relationship instead of voluntarily subjecting themselves to someone who, when, you know, when crap's hitting the fan and it feels bad, they'll always choose themselves over you. It makes sense for a healthy person to like go and not subject themselves to that absence of love, compassion, support, respect, all of these things. When people feel unsafe, whether it's in this really acute, immediate danger way or in this, I don't trust that this person or this relationship is healthy. I don't trust that it's going to last. I don't trust that it's good for me. If I voluntarily subject myself to this for the next year, the next five years, the next 10 years, I'm only going to hurt worse. Matt's only going to keep doing this over and over again. And the pain will increase in severity each time over and over. You know, you talked about this notion of like men are like waffles, women are like spaghetti. And I think it's a wonderful metaphor. I, I don't think that it's universally true, but I think in a math way, it's like statistically true most of the time, certainly, and, and in male female relationships. And I think it's a really critical idea, this, this notion of past events being connected to current events. And I don't necessarily think one is identical to the other. I think they're both data points that tell the same story. And it's, it's what I just said that my wife must have concluded in, in both situations, one from seven years ago and one from the, the one that just happened. She may conclude my husband, when he doesn't agree with me or doesn't think I should think and feel what I do, will always choose himself over me. That to me is what is the common thread in so many of these incidents in our relationship history. And they all like produce like a sort of a statistical trend line that suggests it's only going to continue tomorrow. And so my work is about changing our habits so that the statistical trend line like, suggests that we're, we're getting better, stronger, moving toward each other, safer. And um, I think when people become mindful of that idea, that this data trend that in, in the way that we're, our actions communicate something to our partner, it just it can change the world for people yeah. if they can approach it that way. And I think when, when we talk about it in the context of character, and I'm not saying character isn't relevant to this conversation, it certainly is sometimes, but I think a lot of people have reasonably solid character and they, they really do mean well. And, and so many of us get bogged down in, well, I, I didn't try to do anything bad. I didn't try to hurt you. So stop attacking me as if I did or criticizing me as if I did. And, and that continues to perpetuate this invalidation. And so it's, it's not about character. It's not about whether you even did something bad. It's the math result of your actions, regardless of whether it's good or bad, regardless of whether or not there's a monster there. Equal pain for this other person. If you can learn how to show up for that person effectively in those moments, rather than getting bogged down in your disagreement or difference of opinion, I just, I believe so strongly that that will rebuild and or maintain trust in relationships and serve people very, very well. And so that's probably the number one foundational habit that I think gets lost in the busyness of daily life and our busy minds. And people don't consider how important that is to safety and trust in relationships. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been taking notes and I've got to, when I take notes, I put my little comments off to the side. I've got a ton of comments here. So, um, one thing I do want to say when it comes to the invalidation triple threat that you mentioned earlier is we all need to understand that there's something inside of us that just to have a conversation will, will play not really the devil's advocate, but will take an opposing view. Even if we agree with the person, Sometimes just to have a, like it's a, it's, it's a psychological thing a lot of us do just naturally that will take the opposite view and will look like we're opposing. So just understand if your spouse is in pain, you might have to kind of switch out of that and go, okay, what, let me, let me tell her, let me tell him the parts I agree with. Like, let's start there. And then entering into a, a place of caring for her Going back to the monster under the bed scenario, if that's happening 
you know, if you're a father and that's happening, understand you could be your child's hero. You could be the hero. I remember one hearing a story of one father getting a monster spray, you know, and spraying under the bed. But even if you're, ooh, I'm going to be brave and I'm going to look under there, you know, look at it. No, no, no monsters, you know, no monsters. So it's safe. You could be that child's hero. And that's something we, we say to the guys, you know, the first two on two conversation we have, once we start getting into, um, you know, weekly two on twos, um, the first thing we say during that initial conversation is, um, you know, one of you guys is going to be the hero here, you know, and he needs to understand he could totally be the hero by validating her and, and sitting in the ick. Next time, we'll cover a major obstacle to healing defensiveness and what can be done instead. See you then.